Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we take the Minimum RC T45 almost ready to fly electric um, ducted fan jet. We'll assemble it, discuss it, and go ahead and take it out for a test flight. Let's get to it. As a reminder, there are chapters in the timeline if you'd like to jump ahead to a particular section of this video. The folks at Minimum RC Ocean uh, sent me this T45, all ready to fly DOS Hawk, and the transmitter to do a build and fly review. So let's do a quick unboxing on this. Uh, so again, it's a nice box. It comes in here. It's 95 pre-assembled, very compact jet. It's a uh, two-cell LiPo to do the 30 millimeter electric um, electric ducted fan system and it has gyro assisted with three flight modes and so I'm still kind of figuring it out but this transmitter has the gyro stabilization in it that works with this to provide the stabilized flight which is a good thing for these smaller jets so we're gonna we're going to give that a try so um, this is the box and it comes a little bit more foam packing on it but just so you can see what's in it this is the airplane and as the box mentions, it's about 95% complete. So they've done all the hard work of assembling it over uh, EPS foam. It's really quite smooth. The servos are installed, uh, the controls. You can see the engine fan in the back. That's the 30 millimeter uh, electric ducted fan. All the wires are in place. The only thing you have to do is put on the wing, the tail surfaces, and connect the ailerons, I think, and you're done. Uh, this is the canopy very nicely in place and you can see all the servos and control surfaces, receiver, electronic speed control, everything is installed there for you. So it's it's really a pretty nice um, offer. So going through it, you have the horizontal tail surfaces, the fin rudder. It's three channels with ailerons and elevator. There's no rudder control. The wing is located right here, all with a balance of strength and weight for the model. This is the complete instruction manual here, so we'll go through that later on, but that's it. The other tail surface, and then you have a, <clears throat> a, a belly pan for the fuselage, and the landing gear is here. The model does have landing gear, and they um, have included some glue as well. The landing gear, I think, is a pretty good idea because th there, you'll see as we build it, there are some exposed control surfaces, uh, push rods underneath the wing. The landing gear will keep that clear. Uh, so we'll, we'll explore that as we build it. The other thing that came is this transmitter right here. And again, this is uh, matched to the uh, airplane from Minimum RC. And in this transmitter box, we have our transmitter. We'll open that up later. And instruction manuals and we have the charger and the 180 milliamp two uh, cell lipo battery that's needed to give this plane enough power so that's everything that we need the transmitter the in-flight battery charger all that so the next step is to put it together and we'll we'll see how that goes i built several i think three other of the electric ducted fan jets from minimum rc they're some of the most carefully designed kits I've built in my life. The reason for that, they want a realistic looking jet. They want it to be lightweight so that the, the fan can power the jet. So it's an incredible balancing act between materials, coverings, motors, batteries, and so forth. So the, the, the catch with these airplanes are they're extremely well designed, but you have to follow the directions. It's about a 75 step direction to build them. And you, you simply can't make a mistake. The old carpenter's adage of measure twice and um, measure twice, cut once, measure three times before you glue here. Because if you glue something in the wrong way, there's almost no recovery. But they go together well. There's no painting. All this decoration is either printed onto the foam or uh, contact um, paper that goes onto the fuselage itself. So they're good jets, they fly well, but the problem was you had to build them and not everybody could do that, I don't think. It was a lot of work to get it done right. So what has led the folks at Minimum RC is this is their first um, almost ready to fly, 95% built uh, electric ducted fan. 
basically the same motor as in the F86 in here, but all the hard part, the location, the insertion, everything is done for you. So again, you just have to glue on some wings and tail surfaces and you should be good to go. So it looks like this will be a new line of um, aircraft. Uh, this being reviewed in July of 2025. I noticed just today they're adding an F-16 onto uh, that offering. They all ready to fly. So that's a little bit of background on it. And now we'll go ahead and put the jet together. This is a view of the Minimum RC website with the T-45 and the transmitter. You can see the Thunderbird in July of 2025 just being offered as an almost ready to fly. So scrolling down the website, good videos, various clicks for the products itself. <clears throat> These are the kit jets you can see with no landing gear. You have to assemble the kit. Going back up to our T-45, we'll click on this right here. And it'll take us to that section. Very easy to order by mail. To describe what's in there, the offerings, <clears throat> good pictures of the jet, a description of what it does. I think the prices are extremely reasonable for what they're doing. Nice view of the jet and the transmitter. I think the transmitter is good to have with this because the stabilization features uh, talk to the jet to provide stabilized flight and some further details on the model specifications as well as the shipping kit box. The T-45 Goshawk is the trainer used by the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps to train Navy and Marine Corps pilots how to land on a carrier. Their first carrier landings will be in this aircraft. It's optimized for carrier use, stronger landing gear, and of course a tail hook. It's a derivative of the British um, Hawk aircraft, uh, heavily modified for the carrier mission. It was um, Made by McDonnell Douglas, it was built between 1998 and 2009, and a total of 221 of these aircraft uh, were manufactured. Uh, so again, as a trainer, an ideal um, subject to do a uh, electric ductile fan aircraft. There are two manuals that come with this. There's one on assembling the airplane itself, the T-45. Another quite complete one on the Adrama tra transmitter. The transmitter is linked to the electronics in the jet for stabilization, gyros, things like that. I don't really have any idea how they do that, but it's definitely connected. Other one of the uh, minimum RC, I bonded it to my regular Spectrum DX6. I think you're well served to use the Andromeda transmitters due to the stabilization features. They seem to do pretty good electronic handshakes. We'll go into that with a little bit more detail. So let's take a look at the instruction manuals now. This is the instruction manual. As it's 95% built, that is accurate. There's really not too much to cover. Good uh, picture of the plane. You glue on the tail surfaces, uh, the wing, connect the controls, connect them to the control rods, and off you go. This is a transmitter. I get a good description of the various modes of how this all works. The trans transmitter seemed very steady. Everything worked as advertised. I was um, very pleased with it. The T-45 is, comes with this glue. You're free to use it. I'm pretty comfortable using this gap-filling um, CA glue. I used it for this model as well as the previous ones I built. Always, though, with foam, you want to do a test of the glue with a fuselage pan here. I just put a little on there to make sure it didn't react uh, poorly with the foam. But this uh, gap-filling uh, medium CA worked very well for me. Another look at everything that came with the transmitter and kit shipment. You have the wing with the ailerons installed and control horns, the fuselage with everything in there, the electronics, the motor, the tail surfaces, the belly plan, landing gear, charger, instruction manuals, and the transmitter. This is a view of the um, canopy, which I think is very nice. They put in the, uh, the, the colored pictures to give the illusion of a cockpit in there. Uh, a very nice addition to the overall model. The fuselage is really the key to everything. The, you can see the aileron servo there, the wires that connect the uh, uh, ESC to the motor and back. The wing glues right onto the saddle there. Cheater hole for the uh, ducted fan. You see the 30 millimeter fan uh, through there. I have one of the um, elevators connected. Very easy to do, they just clip right in place. The other one glues onto that little tab just with Glues is really it's all you have to do. They're angled correctly for what you need to do for the model. There's another view of the ducted fan unit properly installed in the back. Again, the fuselage with both of the um, tail uh, horizontal tail surfaces installed. They are angled slightly. That's the way it is on the T45. And then we put the rudder and uh, the fin and rudder in place. There is no movable rudder. It just stays in place on the model. You, you, you do not need a rudder for this type of flying. 
The wing is complete, our ailerons are hinged, the control horns are in place angled to uh, pick up the control rods. You simply glue that into place, and here's a view of the finished model. Uh, you can build it easily in a half an hour. The center gravity location is crucial for any airplane, especially these smaller RC models. Now this canopy is held on by a little magnet in back. The battery goes to the front. There's really, there is no mention of the CG on the plans because there's nothing you can do about it. Everything is built in, is properly located and considered. You do need the two cell battery for that heavier weight in the nose, but with the nose there, it balances right about here when I hold it um, on the fuselage. And so the CG, center of gravity, I think will be correct, but there's really not much I can do about it. Just use the two cell battery as far forward as it can go. One thing I wanted to mention, when you look at the models on the Minimum RC website, very good website, you'll see a lot of their kit-built airplanes. And the way you can tell they're kit-built, they don't have any landing gear. They just are, are gear up. You hand launch them and land on their bellies, which is fine. It looks like they are putting gear on these almost ready to fly. It's been on this one. It'll be on the F-16. I can't guarantee every one. They're very lightweight gear. They, fit, they merely go into slots here. I think the gear is actually a pretty good idea to have. You, you may say, well, I'm just not going to put on the gear and I'll land on the belly. These horns that stick out for the ailerons are going to be very vulnerable to um, scraping on the ground. They're very delicate with the connection here. I think the gear is good to have in place just for that protection. The one thing that I did not do, they've got these little thin plastic gear covers that go here. There's no need for that. They're going to get knocked off at the field, so I'm going to do it without the um, uh, gear covers. And then the other thing is, the direction say you can take off on the ground, you just have to adjust the nose gear to steer straight. I think that's probably correct. The, the wheels look like they will support a ground takeoff, but it, again, there's no nose gear steering. Sometimes you have to make some decisions as you build the model. This is a very, very well-designed kit, but there is this little bottom fuselage pan. This is the wing, and this goes in place here just to make it look better on the bottom of the wing like this. The problem is this rubs against the aileron control rods here. Uh, this is built in. There's nothing I can do about it, so I just elected not to put this on the bottom so these aileron... Um, push rods have an absolutely free and clear travel path to the control horns. So there's no binding at all. Okay, to power it up the model, the way per the directions, you plug in the battery to the airplane, the uh, ESC first, then you turn on the transmitter. We've got the steady blue light, so it is connected and binded. Green is the auto uh, landing, um, uh, auto leveling mode, so we're good on that. Be sure when you turn this on, you keep your throttle low, because when that kicks in, the throttle will go. This is the two cell battery. We put that as far forward as we can at the field. I'll probably put in just a little bit of tape to hold it. You can hear a little bit of chattering. That's the stabilization system, which is good. And so let's take a look at the control throws. So this is up, down, not much, that's what you need. And then the ailerons are there and the throttle will point it away. So that's the throttle right there. Again, that mode is built in, which is really good for you. I want to demonstrate how the auto leveling system works. I can hear it chattering. What I'm going to do is raise the nose, and that'll show the elevator going down to try to level it. So when I raise the nose, do you see how the elevator goes down? And when the nose goes back down, this goes up, trying to keep it level. That just works in extremely fast real time in the air. And these things, the stabilization usually works very well, so, so that's where we are. So this is a review of the model. As I mentioned, the center gravity balances about there, which I think is fine. Everything looks good, very well designed kit. The next thing is to wait for a good day, day at the RC field and take it out for a test flight. We are out at the field. Here's a nice view of the model. You can see, really to the hand, the size of it. Again, just taking a walk around to the model. Here's a profile, very accurate rendition of the model. The underside with the uh, control uh, horns. The ailerons is a little bit far forward for that, just for center gravity purposes. The ducted fan unit. Again, just a very clean design and lightweight gear. So we're here at the field today. We're gonna to test fly the T-45. Looks like a nice day for a uh, test flight. Wind is about two to three knots and uh, clear. So this is the model. Everything looks okay. We'll check the center of gravity. 
everything looks okay. We just will put in the battery, bind it, do a quick control check, and then I'll do a hand launch and we'll see if it flies. We plugged in the battery. Uh, we have what we're looking for, a steady blue light. That means it's binded, connected here. And the green, that'll be the uh, auto leveling feature for sure. So let's do a quick control check with the elevators on the back, right, the ailerons, and then the motor. All right, here we go. Wish me luck. So I decided to try a ground takeoff. The nose gear wasn't straight. Go with a hand launch. I just didn't give it enough of a push, but had enough power, bounced off the ground, and we're flying. So the plane flies great, incredibly stable with the stabilization. Um, it was fast, it handled well, it was super smooth. The one critique, you'll see this later on, I was in the fully stabilized mode, I just didn't have enough turn capability. So here we are circling to the right, I'm coming back for a landing, again with these electroductive fans, you pull the power, they come down quickly, here we go for a landing, and the gear did a pretty good job. Super happy with the first flight, that was the first flight. So it's got plenty of power, but I was it, with full turn, it just wasn't turning, I think, because I was in the auto level mode, I push this button once, you can see I'm in the blue thing, uh, light right here, which is assisted stabilization. Let's try it once more. There may be a little bit more control throw. Tried one more flight. Unfortunately, the batteries are just a little bit too low, didn't have enough oomph, and we'll recharge and try again. So I've just completed the initial flight of the T-45. I'm, I'm super happy. Um, the hand launch is important. You saw it kind of touched down and went up, but the jet seems to have plenty of power. Um, Obviously, it was into the wind. I was in the full stabilization mode, um, uh, the green light, and I didn't have as much turning capability as I wanted to. So the battery is a little bit low, but on subsequent flights, I'm going to try to go into the, um, the blue mode, the assisted stabilization. I think I'll have a little bit more turn there. And I did uh, mostly left turns. I did some right turns towards the end, but it was absolutely steady. The stabilization system works fine. It's a very positive control, it's just like a little bit more turn as we go around. But you can see, brought it back, landed on the field, and um, just an impressive little jet. It flies well with that stabilization system, and looking forward to future flights.